Hi, I'm Pat with Garmin. Thanks for joining us for our virtual AirVenture Oshkosh experience. Today we're going to go through some of the equipment in this A36 Bonanza behind us, so come along. All right, so here we are inside of the A36. We're going to run through all of the equipment uh, that Garmin has installed in here, and then we'll go through each one individually in a little more detail. We're going to start with what's right front and center with me, the G500 TXI. Uh, this is an EFIS system that will do a couple of things. It'll replace all of your mechanical flight instruments with digital solid state uh, avionics, as well as offer you the option to uh, display a multifunction display where you can add things like weather, traffic, terrain, uh, even view approach charts. Over on the far right side of the aircraft, we have another uh, G500 uh, TXI display. This one is in the format of a seven inch portrait display, and it's configured to be our EIS or engine indication system. Uh, now the G500 TXI over here, uh, acting as our EIS is gonna replace all of the factory uh, engine pressure and mechanical gauges that you use for engine, uh, uh, engine indication, as well as be able to record a lot of digital information uh, for later viewing. In the center stack, we've got uh, two of our GTN XI series navigators. So on top is the GTN 750 XI, and below that is the GTN 650 XI. Both of these uh, navigators will handle the GPS, the communication navigation radios, as well as have a multitude of multifunction display capabilities. And in the case of this aircraft, actually control a remotely mounted audio panel and transponder, which leads to this nice clean panel layout. Uh, at the bottom of the stack, we've got the GMC 605, which is the control head for Garmin's GFC 600 digital autopilot. Uh, very popular model, especially for the A36. And we'll cover some of the features of those here uh, shortly. And then rounding out the panel over here on the far left side, we have a Garmin G5, a very popular product for, uh, for Garmin and, and has been installed uh, very widely. In this uh, installation, it's actually set up as a standby for our G500 TXI. So you'll notice no mechanical standby gauges. Uh, that's all handled uh, all in one package by the G5. The TXI series is actually a family of products uh, that all are the same digital EFIS system. In this aircraft, we've got the G500 TXI, which is intended for aircraft below 6,000 uh, pounds. The next uh, member of the family is the G600 TXI, which is for aircraft above 6,000 pounds. And then uh, relatively new for Garmin, we also have a G700 TXI, which is for transport category aircraft. And then rounding out the family is uh, the G500H TXI, uh, which is uh, similar to the G500 TXI, just intended for VFR helicopters. Now, uh, all of the operations and the uh, uh, design layouts and the screens are very similar across all these different product lines. There are actually three different uh, physical layouts and sizes of these displays. Uh, in this aircraft, we've got the 10-inch uh, horizontal display. We've also got the 7-inch portrait display as our EIS. And lastly, there's a 7-inch uh, horizontal or landscape display that's also available. So plenty of flexibility depending on the size and the layout of the aircraft and, and, and what your needs are. Now, on this 10-inch display, we've got it split right now, 60-40, uh, with 60% as the primary flight display 40% as the multifunction display. Uh, as, you, as you look on the primary flight display, you can see we've got vertical tapes for airspeed, altitude, we've got a uh, pitch ladder, we've also got an HSI, and so really your basic six pack functions are all right there centered in one very small, easy to scan location. There's also a couple other instruments that are displayed here that uh, are nice because you can remove the uh, archaic non-digital ones from your aircraft. We've got uh, the ability to show a second nav source We've got uh, outside air temperature, we've got a timer and a clock. So lots of consolidation into one nice digital display that's gonna ultimately uh, last longer, work better, and provide a lot more information for you. Uh, one of the coolest new features of the TXI display series is what's shown here at the bottom, the HSI map. So we were able to actually replace uh, or actually add to a boring old HSI, an integrated map that shows weather, traffic, terrain, as well as your flight plan. So you can really enhance the situational awareness and ability to know exactly where you are, where you're going next, and what's going on around you. Uh, in order to make this really easy to use, you can actually just zoom in and out with a single finger uh, and, and uh, really make sure you can see everything as quickly and as easy, easily as you need to. 
Now you'll notice that I'm interacting with the TXI display with a touch screen and uh, it's very intuitive and very easy to use. But you'll notice in the bottom right and left corner there are knobs and those can also be used to input uh, and change information on the display. Typically in this setup with the PFD on the left hand side, the left hand knob is going to change your bugs and the values for those bugs. So heading, altitude, vertical speed, things like that. On the right hand side of the TXI display, we've got a multifunction display. Right now it's showing our moving map and the knob on the bottom right hand corner is actually going to allow you to scroll between the different multifunction pages and obviously you can also use your touchscreen as well. So on the multifunction display you see a very familiar looking home page which is going to have all of the icons for all the different pages you can bring up and scroll between uh, and just the, the nice touchscreen layout uh, really makes it easy to navigate this product without having to dive too deep into the manuals. Some of the information you can show on the multifunction display Along with the map, you can show traffic, weather, terrain, uh, your flight plan from the GTN Navigator, as well as some utilities uh, and some of the setup options. Uh, whenever you leave the home screen of the TXI and a lot of the other Garmin displays, there's usually a home button there that will take you right back to the home button if you happen to get uh, lost in a menu or you need to quickly get back to the map to see uh, if you're straying too close to some airspace or something like that. One of the most striking features of the G500 TXI is Garmin Synthetic Vision Technology. This optional uh, enablement for the G500 TXI uh, renders the PFD more like a window outside. So even if you're flying at night or in the clouds, you can see a virtual view of what the terrain around you looks like. It's very helpful when you're flying in the mountains or even if you're flying at night over unfamiliar terrain, you can see uh, a topographical details, you can see airport details on the map as well as traffic in the area. So really helps correlate exactly where you are and in relation to the things around you uh, and just provide that extra level of comfort, again, especially at night or in unfamiliar areas. Another great feature of the synthetic vision technology is what's called the flight path marker. Uh, that's a little marker, a little green circle that shows up on the screen. It takes into account the way you're moving through the air. So not only your heading, but also the wind and it shows you exactly where you're moving uh, in relation to the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. So really great for nailing a crosswind landing or making sure you're tracking along a straight line and got your crab angle perfectly worked out. The G500 TXI can also be used as an EIS or engine indication system. It's a very powerful tool uh, to glean a lot of information about not only how your engine is currently running, but how uh, it's running historically. The G500 TXI has a lot of interesting gauges over here that you can see. We've got uh, all of your factory gauges and Garmin's actually spent a lot of time making sure that these gauges are both easy to read and easy to understand, both as the digital and the analog format. So if you look at your manifold pressure, for example, we've got a gauge with a green arc. We've also got a nice actual digital readout below that. Same for oil pressure and temperature, RPM and fuel flows. Uh, also on the display, we've got a, a bar graph for in this case, turbine inlet temperature and the CHT. The engine's not running, so there's not any uh, data on there yet, but once, you're, once the engine is up and running, you'll actually see the digital readouts of those uh, pieces of information. Over on the right-hand side, you can see there's a couple of different boxes with a white outline. Those are actually pilot selectable, so you can choose which additional pieces of information you wanna see, whichever is most important for your mission or for the flying you're doing that day. In this case, we've got fuel remaining and the fuel used. In the center, we've got our fuel gauges, and it's a nice graphical depiction of how much fuel is left. And then uh, if you look at here at the menu, we've also got our fuel computer settings. And so based on the estimated fuel remaining, we can show you the range, endurance, and those will read out uh, as you fly along and change as you fly along. Uh, the G500 TXI has a lot of flexibility in terms of the different layouts for gauges and markings, uh, which are all installer configurable and they'll match the exact specifications of your own aircraft gauges that were factory installed. Some of the other nice benefits of the EIS system is both a fuel computer, so it will give you some nice information about your fuel consumption, range, endurance, things like that, as well as advisories to the pilot. So some of those are required like uh, oil temperature, uh, but you can also, the pilot can set up certain advisories as well. So if you wanna know 20 degrees before some actual red line, you can have your own customized alerts pop up on the screen for you. The other nice thing about the EIS system is all of the data is recorded 
and logged in these SD cards that you insert into the side. So you can take that out uh, to your computer, you can uh, upload it and use it for analysis. Uh, it, it downloads as a big spreadsheet. And the other nice thing is if you pair it with Garmin Pilot, you can actually stream that data wirelessly to your iPad in real time as you're flying along. So for anyone who's really into breaking down into the data and seeing exactly how trends are developing, you can do that in real time with the Garmin Pilot application. The GTN XI really is the heart of the avionics system. That's where you're going to do most of your flight planning, most of your interacting, loading procedures uh, of the whole system. And uh, we've really designed it to be very easy to use and easy to interact with because of that. So as we look at the GTN 750XI, you can see across the top, we've got our communication uh, and transponder audio panel intercom remote controls. And then the rest of the screen, we've got the home screen here. And we're going to go through each one of these functions in a little more detail. Starting on the top left, we've got our COM1 frequency. In this case, it's showing Minneapolis uh, Center. And you can see we've actually uh, reversed that frequency and looked it up in our database and know that that is Minneapolis Approach. So, or excuse me, Minneapolis Center. So the nice thing is if you're flying along and you're uh, in unfamiliar territory, that'll help you remember who you were talking to or who you were last talking to. One of the nice things about the uh, both the COM and the NAV frequencies by touching on the standby frequency, you're brought up with this input menu and you can either touch on the screen itself or you can use the knob to manually enter whatever frequency you need. Press enter and that will go back into the standby. Uh, the nav side of the house works the exact same way. You can bring up this input menu and you can manually type in the frequency. The other nice thing here is this find button, which allows you to actually look up recent nearest uh, flight plan related frequencies or even user saved frequencies. So if you want to take a look here and if we're going to go fly, fly to Johnson County Executive Airport, we can look up the different frequencies and simply touching on this button will automatically load that into the standby. Also across the top here, we've got our audio panel controls, which makes it very easy to select which radio you'll be transmitting on and which radio you'll be receiving on. You can also monitor additional radios right from this menu. And on the bottom here, you can see we've got 3D audio selected. Very nice feature of the Garmin GMA35C audio panel that we have here. You actually hear audio in three dimensions. So your passenger to the, to the right of you actually sounds like they're coming in from your right ear. Makes uh, interpreting a bunch of different radio communications all at once that much easier. We'll go here to the intercom. And this is one of my favorite things. A lot of our panel mounted audio panels uh, maybe a little bit tricky to tell exactly at a quick glance uh, who can talk to who and who can hear who. Uh, the nice thing about this intercom setup is we've got these nice bright green arrows that show exactly who is able to talk with who, and you can even change the volume and squelch for each individual person very easily right from this menu. Also shown here, we've got music selections. So this is great. If you select music source two, you can actually quickly figure out who the distribution is and who should be receiving that information. And uh, you can easily isolate front seat passengers from back seat passengers based on those preferences. Uh, over uh, here on the top right, we've got our transponder controls. Uh, touching on this field is as simple as bringing up this input page. You can use these buttons or the knobs to change these as well as change the mode uh, all at one time. And if you're flying a uh, type of aircraft that uses a flight ID for your operation, you can make those changes here as well. So moving on to uh, the main screen area of the GTN, we've got the home page here, which shows all of the different icons for the different pages that can be displayed. Starting with the map, you've got our nice, rich, interactive moving map. Uh, easy to zoom in and zoom out. And you can select the viewing range of all the different things you see on the map. So the airspace, traffic, intersections, obstacles, all of those things. You can even use things like smart airspace which will de-emphasize airspace that is either way above you or way below you to declutter the map to show exactly what you like. Um, if you notice on the map here, we've got four corners, and each, in each of these four corners, we've got different pieces of information. In this case, we've got ground speed, vertical speed required. We've got a shortcut to the traffic page and a shortcut to the procedure page. Uh, those four corners are all uh, user-selectable and customizable, so we've added a lot more functionality in recent software updates that allow you to make this 
uh, page a lot more useful. You can put shortcuts to pages. The procedure one is a, is a very often used one. And you can also change these data fields so that whatever is most important to you is readily available. One thing uh, a lot of customers like to ask, what are some of the shortcuts or tips and tricks for the GTN? One that I like to point out to people is on this moving map page across the bottom, we've got the uh, a CDI as well as our flight plan uh, shown here with the previous, current, and next uh, waypoints. If you actually touch on that section, it will bring you right to the active flight plan page. So that's a nice little shortcut to save you having to go back to the home page and then selecting flight plan. All right, so now we move on to the traffic page. One of the nice things about the Garmin ADSB solution is what's called target trend. Now that uses uh, both your relative motion and the aircraft uh, target aircraft relative motion to be able to show how you're moving in relation to each other. Uh, it's a it's a step above just a typical ADSB traffic solution, which only shows how the uh, target is moving, but doesn't take your own movement into relation. So very helpful for uh, when you're trying to pass under or behind or near another aircraft uh, and help you make those tactical decisions as you fly through certain airspaces. Um, the other nice thing you can see on the screen here is there's another aircraft parked just outside our hangar that's on the ground. And you'll notice the icon for it is brown, which is a quick indication to know that that is not an aircraft in the air. Uh, very helpful for overflying an airport and making sure that uh, the, the targets that you see are actually on the ground versus in the traffic pattern, for example. Next, we've got terrain. Uh, this is a very helpful page. Uh, if you notice on this terrain page, there's not a lot of other aviation data, and that's on purpose. Uh, this page is designed for strictly making sure you're staying within the bounds of the terrain. You'll see the red and yellow shading, which correspond to either uh, 100 feet above or 1,000 feet above the terrain that you're in. We're on the ground here, so of course there's a lot of red uh, on the display there, and we're in Kansas, so relatively flat. Very helpful for both looking uh, downwards and then outwards uh, as the terrain may rise around you and make those tactical decisions. Also on this display, you'll notice there are obstacles. So it's called the terrain page, but really it's the terrain and obstacle page, and that's been optimized to show both of those features. Next, we've got the weather page. And if you notice uh, on, on this installation, we've actually got a couple of different weather inputs. So once we select the weather page, we then have to select which of the different options do we want to see. If we just take a look at uh, FISPI weather, for example, you can see a little bit of radar returns here over in the Missouri area. Uh, but you can really, if you look here at menu, you can overlay all of the different FISPI weather options. If we were flying right now, we'd be picking up a lot more, but you can change all of these. And the nice thing is, as you fly along, this list along the left-hand side here will grow to show you all of those weather products and all of the ages that are shown there. Another nice feature of the GTN that was introduced uh, in, a, in a more recent software update is the ability to animate the weather. So what the, what the GTN does, it actually caches uh, the last uh, six weather updates and gives you the option to play them. So you can even uh, get an even better view of how the weather is changing over time and have more information when you're making weather-based decisions. Just a couple of the other weather options that we have here uh, in this aircraft. There's Sirius XM weather. So if we had a GDL 69 installed and receiving that information, we can show that satellite-based weather. We've also got Connect weather, which is really ideal for people flying outside the United States where there aren't as many other weather options. Uh, Connects uses satellite-based weather and it has a global coverage. And then lastly, we've got storm scope. So if you have a uh, uh, legacy non-garment storm scope display installed on your aircraft already, uh, if it's compatible, you can display and control it here from this page on the GTM. We've got the charts page here, and this is actually really useful for both viewing uh, charts associated with an airport, as well as looking at the different uh, sections of the chart in more detail. Now we're on the ground here at New Century and so it has uh, shown us the New Century Airport but if we were uh, air, in the air and had a destination airport loaded in there when you select the chart page it'll automatically show you charts for your destination because the assumption is that you want to look at your destination charts. Um, the nice thing is though if you wanted to look if you're on the ground here at New Century and you want to check another airport's chart it's as simple as touching on this button bringing up the keypad and then entering the airport information. 
Uh, one other nice thing is you can actually select the types of charts you want to see. If we just select the first approach here for New Century, you can see we get the ILS 3.6. Right there is, uh, is where we are in relation to the approach, and that's called geo-referencing on the charts. Really helpful for making sure that as you turn inbound, you're actually turning inbound and you're making sure that you're staying on course and, uh, and staying away from any areas that you should be avoiding on the approach. There's also this full screen option, which allows you to uh, remove that menu from the side and then actually get a full screen chart, which you can then zoom in and pan around uh, with even greater detail. Uh, the flight plan page is really where the GTN shines. Uh, here we've got an approach into New Century Airport already loaded. Uh, you can actually delete that fairly easily by selecting delete. Um, and now once you're on the flight plan page, it's very easy to add a waypoint. It's as simple as touching and inputting uh, the various waypoints. So if we put in the airport next door here, Johnson County, it's as easy as that. You simply add in waypoints as you go along. And one of the newer features of the GTN XI series is the ability to put in altitudes for crossing restrictions. So if you input uh, our next waypoint here, the Kansas City VOR, you'll see there's a field here for feet. Touching on that brings up the option to put in, in a long track offset the altitude type, whether it's at, above, or below, and then actually input the altitude that you want to put the constraint. In this case, we'll put 5,000 feet, and there you go, now it's been added to our flight plan. Next up, uh, for people flying IFR is one of the more commonly used features. It's the procedures page. Uh, so from the home page, if you touch on procedures, you can see here we've got uh, the selections for departure, arrival, and approach procedures. In this case, uh, all of those will bring up the appropriate procedure. Uh, if we just look at approach, for example, since we're on the ground here at IXD, it automatically identifies IXD as the airport that we want to look for. You select the approach. We'll pick LNAV plus V here for runway 18. And then you have the option to either load or load and activate the approach, depending on the phase of flight that you're in. What I like about this page is it gives you the whole sequence of everything as well as a map that you can actually zoom and pan on this map as well. So you can double check and make sure that you've loaded the proper procedure. If you've got parallel runways, for instance, you want to make sure you've got the right one selected. The other nice thing about this page is it's got the chart function. So you can actually, from the procedures page, look at the chart itself to make sure that it's got the minimums that you need or it's got the proper clearances for, for what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, one of the nicer features of the GTN uh, being a GPS itself with this huge database of, of aircraft and, and airports is the nearest function. So from the home page, if you touch on nearest, it brings up a menu to show you all of the nearest things that you might want to see. Uh, most commonly used is airports. So if you're flying along in uh, maybe a desolate area or an unfamiliar area, you can quickly bring up a list of all of the nearest airports along with the bearing distance and the approach and runway type. So if you do have a reason to uh, make a diversion, you can use this information to quickly let you know what might be the best course and where might be the best place to go. And finally, along the bottom row of the GTN, we've got a couple more different pages that are uh, a little less used, but still very important. We've got waypoint information, which allows you to look up information about airports, intersections, VORs, and DBs. We've got services, which is where you configure uh, an Iridium satellite telephone uh, and text messaging, as well as your audio inputs. We've also got utilities, which is where you can do some E6B style calculations, some fuel calculations, as well as vertical navigation. And then lastly, we've got system where you can change settings like uh, the time zone format. You can change the units that things are measured in, as well as check the external LRUs that are interfaced to the GTN, as well as the database information. Now the GTN 750 and the GTN 650, uh, despite having different screen sizes, operate functionally the same. The same uh, touchscreen and knob inputs work on both of them. Uh, they both have uh, the uh, comm and nav radios built in as well. Um, functionally, the only difference between them, aside from the size, the GTN 650 with a smaller screen uh, does not display approach charts. It just it just uh, doesn't look quite right on the smaller screen, uh, and the GTN 650 can control a remote transponder as well, uh, but not a remote audio panel like the bigger GTN 750 can, just because there's more screen real estate. Uh, but those are the major differences between them. 
Operationally, they work very much the same. To the left of our G500 TXI, we've got the G5. Uh, in this case, it's set up to be our standby attitude indicator, uh, but it can also be used as a primary attitude indicator uh, in, in aircraft as well. As a standby, the nice thing is all of the bugs, your heading bug, your altitude bug, will be synced between the G5 and the G500 TXI, which means you won't have to enter that input uh, more than once. Uh, the G5 also has a built-in backup battery that's good for at least 30 minutes of standby power if full electrical is lost on the aircraft. And it's very easy to install since uh, while the face of it is square, the body of it itself is actually round and will easily slide into a three inch ATI hole. Um, insulation uh, is even easier. All you really have to uh, connect is power ground, pitot static and a GPS input to be able to run this thing and have it uh, connect. A little more uh, integration to the TXI to make those bugs sync over, but overall very, very fast and very economical. Uh, one of the benefits of the G5s though, as I mentioned, it's not only a backup or a standby, it could also be used as your primary, uh, primary attitude indicator or as a primary HSI. Uh, and that would actually take the place, uh, if you have two G5s as an attitude and a HSI, it'll actually take the place of most instruments in your six pack. And as a standby, you can use this for standby attitude, altitude, and airspeed. So those three standby gauges that are typically required when you do something like a G500 TXI can all be consolidated down into one solid state device like the G5. In this aircraft, we've got the Garmin GFC 600 installed. Uh, the GFC 600 is Garmin's digital autopilot, and it's actually derived from the GFC 700, which if you're flying a G1000 equipped aircraft, you're, you're very familiar with. Um, the GFC 700 from the G1000 was very integrated to the G1000 flight deck. The beauty of the GFC 600 is we've taken all that functionality and capability from the GFC 700 and made it a standalone retrofit autopilot solution. Um, in this case, it benefits from even more integration with the Garmin GTNs and the G500 TXI, but can also be installed as a totally standalone autopilot built into the control head here. There's an AHARS and an air data computer to take care of all that for you. Um, the nice thing about the GFC 600 as well is the servo. So you can see those, those are installed uh, in the wings and tail. Um, but those are actually smart servos that are able to interact with the mode controller and make sure to send back information about the status of the servo. So it leads to uh, the prevention of things like runaway trim and uh, wearing out those servos uh, a lot easier. The other nice thing about the servos is they can be uh, exchanged and removed without having to retention all of the cabling for the, uh, the flight control. So it makes any maintenance that does need to happen uh, that much easier without the need for time of, uh, of re-rigging the aircraft. Some of the features of the GFC 600 though is obviously it's solid state construction. It's an attitude based autopilot. So it's very crisp, very clean in terms of uh, leveling off and, and making turns to the exact heading uh, or track that you need. Um, built in, there's also underspeed and overspeed protection, uh, which is going to keep you from either getting too slow or too fast on, say, a climb or a descent by kind of gently nudging the nose up or down as appropriate to stay within predefined limitations. Uh, another nice feature is what's called Garmin ESP, uh, which uh, actually works in the background even if the autopilot is disengaged. Um, I like to think of ESP as flying with your first flight instructor. Uh, you know when you're learning to fly, and you might be making a turn and you don't really know it yet, but you're starting to get a little bit more bank than you really need to. Um, but you're a young student pilot, so you don't really know. And your instructor just reaches over on the other side of the yoke and just puts one little finger in the opposite direction to make sure you're not exceeding any variances. Um, that is actually what ESP does. So even if the autopilot is turned off, if you're exceeding uh, predetermined pitch and roll limitations, it'll give you a gentle nudge to get you back into a more safe uh, pitch and roll attitude. Um, those those uh, gentle nudges, you can actually override them if, if the situation calls for it, and you can totally disable ESP if you want to as well. Um, the last thing I want to talk about on the GFC 600 is the level button. Now this is uh, really nice. Uh, it's definitely uh, become a uh, passenger briefing item uh, for me. It's making sure that everyone knows what the level button does. Basically, uh, by pressing the level button, you will have the aircraft return to a wings level and a zero pitch, zero climb attitude that uh, will just really kind of reset everything. If you're, if you're trying to make a tight turn or you're in the clouds and you're a little disoriented, 
The level button is going to help get you back to a nice level orientation um, and is always worth making sure everyone on board knows it's delineated with the light, nice blue uh, level functionality. Um, some of the other just general functionalities, there's obviously autopilot engage functions as well as flight director and yaw dampers. We've got the bottom section of buttons divided up by the lateral modes and the vertical modes. So laterally, we can track things like heading um, and nav courses. There's also approach and back course options. And then for vertical, we've got uh, vertical navigation, uh, indicated airspeed climb and vertical speed climb uh, for the different types of climbs and descent rates. You can choose to either uh, climb or descend at a foot per minute rate or at a given airspeed. Um, there's also altitude hold. And then over here is the, is the uh, click wheel, which is really intuitive for making changes to, say, the indicated airspeed or the vertical speed. Um, similar to a trim wheel, if you want to climb at 500 feet per minute, you press vertical speed, click the uh, wheel up five times, and you will have set it for 500 feet per minute. So even, even the interface and the, and the uh, user experience is a lot easier. Garmin actually has two different autopilot solutions uh, for, for aircraft on the retrofit market. We've got the GFC 600 that we have installed here today. We also have the GFC 500 uh, retrofit autopilot as well. Um, a lot, they share the same features in terms of underspeed, overspeed protection, level mode, ESP, as well as the solid state uh, servos and AHARS information. Um, the one big difference between those that, that we get asked all the time is uh, the GFC 500 is intended for a light piston aircraft, whereas the GFC 600 uses bigger servos with more torque and is geared more towards higher performance single engine piston aircraft as well as twin engine aircraft. Um, but uh, functionally, they have the same uh, modes. Um, uh, the operation is, is almost exactly the same. The GFC 500 uh, does require a G5 as the, as the actual attitude source, um, but they do offer the same uh, level of uh, crisp uh, rollouts and, uh, and very precise flying that you expect from an attitude-based autopilot. So that concludes the uh, review of all the equipment installed in Garmin's A36. Thank you for joining us. If you have any other questions, please see your local Garmin dealer or visit us at Garmin.com.